Guerrilla just wrapped up their gameplay reveal event for Horizon Forbidden West. And I gotta say, it's pretty much everything that I wanted from this game. So today we're gonna get into the dirty details of that gameplay reveal. Now before we start, I just wanna say, if you do enjoy to leave the video a nice, thick, and juicy like as always. And if you enjoy this kind of content, you want more like it, then be sure to hit that big red sexy subscribe button right underneath the video. Also got to shout out my channel members. You guys help make these videos possible. Thank you very much. If you want to join and get access to the exclusive perks that they get, be sure to hit the link in the description or hit the blue join button. Anyway, let's begin. So to start off with the basics, tropical San Francisco looks beautiful. In our world, since I lived there for a few years, it is a foggy 50 degree year round area is what I'll leave it at. It is beautiful though, and it is nice to see it in a more tropical setting. As we all know, the world of Horizon has seen many climate catastrophes over time, whether it was because of the era of the old ones, or the machines, or the regrowing of the planet, thanks to Gaia. It has changed the weather pretty significantly, and it's not going to be the same everywhere as it is here today. Now, it was awesome to see some new machines, or at least more of them, like the Claw Striders and the Tremor Tusks. We also got to see a little bit of these otter-looking machines. I I think they gave them a name. I can't remember what it is right now, but there's some little otter ones. I'm sure they're going to be more deadly than they are cute. And um, it, it looks like it's going to be a fun time coming up against some of these newer, I guess, more prehistoric looking machines. A lot of the machines in the Horizon Zero Dawn are kind of a lot of creatures you would run into today, like bison, tigers, other big cats and stuff like that. Whereas these, obviously, tremor tusks look like woolly mammoths and claw striders look like velociraptors. So they're going to be really cool to fight and of course, you can override them and actually ride each of these machines. I don't know if we're going to be able to ride a Tremor Tusk, but I demand it. Please let us ride it. Obviously, the Raiders can do it. The Raiders are going to be our new enemy faction. They can ride them. Aloy should be able to override one and ride that. I really hope that's possible. I saw her ride a Claw Strider. I want to ride a Tremor Tusk. That's all I'm asking. Gorilla, let me ride a Tremor Tusk. Now, in terms of gameplay, there were a lot of improvements. I mean, it's literally like this is exactly what I wanted out of the gameplay. Now you have more options in a fight. In Zero Dawn, it felt like you could kind of slowly stealth your way through some machines, or you could just go all out with the archery combat. Here, it looks like you have a lot more options. If you get into a fight and you're overmatched, you have the ability to escape, and it's done very, very well. Not only do you have tools like smoke bombs to be able to cloud and confuse the machines, but your focus can actually beam out and show you traversal paths so Aloy can climb up certain structures. She also has tools that can get her across certain gaps that you wouldn't be able to in Zero Dawn. So this looks like it's going to be an awesome new facet to the combat wheel or to the kind of combat loop that we have and the experiences that we can have. Speaking of combat, I also got to talk about the spear combat. That was probably my biggest complaint from Zero Dawn is the spear combat and just combat against other humans is just not very good. But here it actually looks really awesome. Not only do you seem to have a little bit more fluidity with your spear in combat, it also looks like you can apply upgrades like you would be able to do with your arrows on your bow to do more damage to certain enemies. Like we got to see here, you can also use it in combat combination with your bow to pull off some really cool moves that I think are going to make for some just insane moments in combat. And I'm really excited to see what kind of options we have with our spear and with our bow and how we can put those two together to just really pull off some awesome moments within the game. Like I said, out of the things that I wanted from the game, those were really the biggest ones were the traversal and the hand to hand combat. I'm very happy to see both of those got a massive upgrade. And I honestly didn't even expect things like smoke bombs to see that is really, really really nice. There's also a new area to traverse. Obviously, most of San Francisco in a thousand years is underwater because of, like I said already, there have been a lot of climate changes. Now, because of that, they added swimming as I'm assuming is going to be a large part of the game. Now, not only is this going to add to the gameplay in terms of our ability to plan out and stake out attacks on certain areas, I'm sure it'll be very handy in regards to stealth, but I'm sure exploring the secrets of the metal world are going to be a key part of why we can go underwater. There's a lot of big buildings out there and I'm sure they're hiding some secrets for Aloy to go and uncover and who knows, maybe that's where something that has to do with the Raiders and why they can control the machines or the Red Blight is out and about in this part of the world. 
Now the game did leave us with some new story tidbits. We got to see the return of some beloved characters like Erend, as well as a faction, the Osram, who we see from the beginning of the trailer. And then of course, uh, with Erend, cause he's a member of the Osram. Erend does retrieve something for us as we rescue him. And it shows us a map of the world. Again, we get to see some more of those new coastlines from all the various climate catastrophes over time. And we also get to see how a red blight comes into existence. It seems. it seems to arrive as a storm, more specifically a hurricane that happens extremely fast because you see the air pressure just kind of drops and then it's all red and stuff and scary. It doesn't reveal anything about the secrets of it. My opinion is that it probably has something to do with Hades and Silence. We know Silence, of course, has Hades. What he's doing with them, I don't know. But this red blight is either a cause of it or maybe they might be able to help solve the red blight. Those two are kind of a mystery, so... Uh, It'll be very interesting to see how all of it ties together. Obviously, Hades is red, so that's a very kind of direct association I think you can make between the two. But regardless, I can't wait to find out. I cannot wait to get my hands on this game. I'm so very excited. Gorilla seems to have put a lot of care and work into this game. And of course, it's going to be available on both PS4 and PS5. So if you haven't gotten your hands on a PS5 yet, you're in luck. You can still play the game. It's going to be great. I can't wait to see it. Let me know you guys thoughts down below. Are you excited for Horizon Forbidden West? If you are, well, let's talk about it. I already said that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.